Hi there. Thank you for downloading and listening to and watching the Lean Into Art Cast. This is a show. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to cross one's path when one goes on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. Although, let me say parenthetically, intuition counts too. But uh, my name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is. So making it explicit is wonderful. Yes. It's always welcome to connect intuition and sort of uh, explicit intention, exploration of thought. I am Rob Stenzinger. Uh, I, I'm a uh, design user experience uh, educator and coach, and uh, I'm an interactive storyteller as well. So I make, I make the digital stuff too. He makes the digital things, mm -hmm. communicates with images in a variety of ways. Uh, what we're doing right now is communicating with images because we're doing this through video as well. Uh, good to see you again, Rob. Um, oh, good to see you, Jersey. It's awesome. Awesome to be here. Love. We've done like, it's still weird. It's over 300 of these. And uh, yeah, it's quite an archive of the, like some recurring topics and whatnot. But uh, uh, there's evidently a lot to talk about. <laughs> uh, the, the creative process and the like specific tools and examples of, 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 of uh, like pro solving problems for visually communicating and all kinds of storytelling, right? Narrative and solving problems, especially like comics comes up a lot. Video games comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, and something that I tell my students, like my young students, especially the teens who start to get into this mindset of like, I just need to get to like a professional level and then things will be easy for me. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. That that's there is an element of that to leveling up, like, and that's where like I feel like intuition becomes informed by like lots and lots of skill acquisition, right? Um, but like, it, it would be awful dull if you just got to a certain level and then you're just coasting the rest of the time. So the, the the I think the reason that one reason we both can check in on this thing so many times over so many years is that we're growing, evolving, and changing, and learning, and you know bringing new thoughts to this, this these topics over and over again. But this week, that's that's to say that. The format of the show, if you are new to it, is that we usually pick a single topic related to life as a visual storyteller, um, being somebody who develops products or services, anything that communicates with images, comics, games, etc. Um, and then we pick a single aspect of that, the, the challenges and interesting problems that come with doing it, and then just uh, mull on it as long as we can. We have two sections. We look at what it looks like, and then we talk about uh, well, how we think about it. And then we conclude with a two minute practice, something that we can do over the next week to continue to refine our skills. So this week's topic is, and this is a, this is a timely one for me, Rob, um, is like looking for uh, local inspiration, local inspiration in terms of like looking around you right now. What do you got that is that you've, things that inspire you, how do you curate the things that inspire you? Um, how do you surround yourself with things to keep that, creative energy, um, I don't want to say up, but flowing, right? Ebbing and flowing, right? Um, the reason it's timely for me is that uh, Ann and I, in the last year, moved to Columbus, Ohio, and we took an apartment for a while while we do home hunting, and the apartment is um, didn't have as much space as our last house did, so a lot of my stuff is in storage right now. And as I, you know, begin house shopping, I'm thinking about spaces that I can use as a studio and what, how am I going to set it up again? I am so having most of my studio, like my, my, my studio, quote unquote, the, the tools I use is basically like my laptop, um, some art boards, pens and most of everything I can I, I use to do my work I can carry in a bag but I mean the space that I surround myself with to feel like I'm maximizing my 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 uh I don't know what you'd say how would you describe it what what, what is this space for that we're describing well I wonder because one of the things that uh was just really affecting to me is um my, my the first time I visited you right in in your home uh -huh. and i you know like everyone everyone's home you, you get it's it's i mean it's it's this interesting private expression of of the things you care about and how do you arrange them and all that kind of stuff and you know sometimes when i go to other folks who identify as artists and makers and stuff it's like the extra there's going to be some treat 
compare like for what people who have that as a concern put into their environment and uh it, it honestly Anna Jersey it was like like just blew up the scale right right because <laughs> you know going in and not to you know going to wild detail it was essentially all these like curated and uh aesthetically interestingly arranged sections as far as you know maybe multiple places on a given wall as far as different themes and juxtapositions of stuff where um you know maybe and i'm making some of this up but but like uh maybe c3po is holding a mini ham sandwich or something or <laughs> but you know yeah. which i don't think is a real but it's a that's a realistic one right as far yeah as the kinds of things that you would see yeah it was beautiful and it was beautiful because there was so, there was the abundance of it and the cleverness and all that and i thought oh my gosh i am not using my space well at all <laughs> and i'm like i got to do better cuz this is fun i could do maybe some small fraction of this and it would just you know be a pretty big step up with uh just playfulness and excitement and being reminded about all these things that are um yeah they're more than things um which we can dig into that. They're, they're, they're sort of expressions and celebrations and memories and all that. And yeah, yeah. That's, I think that that's, that's, that's a good, like sort of um, cursory mapping of what we want to talk about is like, it's not about like, just like, okay, well I've got this trophy on the wall. I've got this shampoo bottle on the wall and it just makes me feel like every time I touch it, I get into the creative zone and I can create, but it's more of like um, a variety of, arranging of things and objects and um to sort of reinforce an environment for yourself where you feel like this is this is celebrating the it, what you're describing when you describe uh the my last house that Anne and I had um yeah like every surface of the house was in some way celebrating what we like to do and create and engage with like our kitchen had three giant chalkboards uh for the whole wall and that we use that as like this is a, this is a capturing surface uh, so when we're having actually it wasn't the kitchen it was the dining room yeah so when we were we'd, we'd be sitting down at the dining room table and we're just having dinner together if an interesting thought would occur to us we had a place to capture that right but then yes there were all these other places where it's like here's our 15 inch star wars chewbacca figure with a uh you know a plate of cold cuts because Anne collects tiny meats, you know? So it's just everywhere you turn, there was something like that. And, and, and I, it, it's funny that you react that way because when parents of my students would come over, cause sometimes like my students, when they get into high school, like we would arrange for private sessions where I'd sit down with them and teach them how to do like clip studio paint, flatting next level stuff. So they can start like right out of high school, possibly doing some freelance work. And the parents would always have this, like it would it'd be one of two reactions. They would walk in and you'd be like, Oh wow. Is this the Willy Wonka life I'm entering my child into? Are they going to turn out like this guy? Or in the case of some of the parents who are like roughly my age, be like, Oh my God, it's like, you just like, your our childhoods is all over your house right <laughs> it's like you didn't grow up i did you did i'm like well yeah that's part of the joy of this but um anyway yes, uh but it depends on what you end up doing and the side effects and right whatever and there is that there's a tension in this far as yeah when people come into that world too which yeah um yeah it'd be interesting to you know if, you know, as that kind of as we explore that might come up as well um because okay. it means something different for for us and it's it's your space right but like the, the the thing that i found really inspiring is is making something of that space and mm. it doesn't have to be um you know like ornate rare collector whatever things it just mm -hmm. is um expressive and um positioned and displayed right and mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's really interesting where I, I i felt both that it was it was um you know impressive and exciting but like um possible also and that's yeah it's it, where i was that's where i i i know i said a kind of a, a positive as a negative or whatever but like where i'm like gosh i could you know this is i could do this i just need to you know elevate these things, put them, put them where I can see them and stuff like that. And in a very lean into arty way of approaching it is to say, okay, what are the forces and decisions that are at work behind defining these spaces so that you can make a thoughtful decision of your own taste, right? Rather than saying like, though, this is the way I do it. And here's the prescription. That's all. 
Just <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is finally the episode where we prescribe everything. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for waiting this long. <laughs> All right. I feel like it's time to hit the music. So I'll just hit some music so we can transfer over to where we need to go. And go. Okay. This, the music signifies the first section of the show where we talk about like what the topic looks like. What, what does it physically look like when we're engaged with it? Um, what inspiration is around you now? Now, Quick caveat, I've got a bunch of pictures uh, loaded up from my last home because, as I said at the top of this one, I currently, we've got some stuff out and about, right, to make the place, like, somewhat comfortable, but most of what we own is in giant boxes waiting for us to find a home so that we can open them up and begin curating spaces again. Um, so I'm going to be leaning into this one thinking, like, I want to hear what Rob thinks about it because I want to help synthesize his approach with how I've traditionally done it to see if I can find a new approach if and when I find a new home here in Columbus. So what what's around you, Rob? Well, I'm in a situation that's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, position of steps wise. Um, Kate and I were in a uh, sort of a smaller uh, house, more, a little more in the city. We moved like 10 minutes away toward it's a, a, a something somewhere that has a little more space so we went through that sort of uh tension of going from apartment to house but it was a small house and then uh hitting the 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 tension in there right where it's let's like we moved to a neighborhood where we i kind of thought because i'm a silly human that oh these people have always lived in this kind of neighborhood but then talking with neighbors and whatnot there's all this story of going from hitting that tension of like growing a family in a small house and realizing, Oh, is it possible that we could get something somewhere with a little more space because lifestyle differences and expectations, you know, when these houses were built and you know, what people did, it's like, you know, people weren't putting an arcade cabinet in their house in the 1950s because the arcade cabinets didn't exist. Right. Stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, so it's interesting. I've, I can really empathize with navigating those tensions. And I am in the situation now where I have way more space and I'm, I feel like, uh Oh, am I using this space? Well, so once in a while I get that, uh Oh, <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm going to put some time on my calendar to quickly, you know, do something right. I need to, to reorganize that bookshelf and see what makes sense with, uh, sitting with those books maybe it's some some stuffed animals collected over the years and stuffed creatures or what have you where right now um yeah anyway so like i have a variety of these kind of objects and the kind of stuff that that goes through my mind is like not just the stuff i managed to hoard and collect over the years it has to just somehow get thrown into this space mm -hmm. but it's like how do i um do this in a um like a meaningful and useful way so it's sometimes it's, it's the idea of I put that time on the calendar and let too much stuff out of a box or I run around gathering a, th a pile of things and it's just not that elegant. It's just a pile of things on a shelf. But like, I, I guess it's fun to mess up, to mess up and, and see what I think about it. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, uh, yeah, I'm in the situation now where I find like in my, in my living space with, you know, where we're, um, our, my main television is I have my video game systems that I've collected over the years. They are present. That's the first time in my entire life of collecting video games over 40 years now, um, where I've had them, I, that stuff in one place. And I, and it's a funny thing because you get to meet it again and decide what does it mean right now? Because it was this combination of, I want this, or I wish that, oh, it's in a box, or it's inelegantly crammed somewhere. Oh God, that's and the life I'm leading. I'm living that life right now so hard. I mean, like literally before, five minutes before we did the show today, I had to grab my tripod with my camera on it, pull it off a shelf, unwind the, the wire, plug it into my computer, you know, like move the little desk that I've got set up here in our little apartment. And I said to myself, I cannot wait until I have a dedicated space that I can just leave this stuff set up 
all the time. And it's the same tension with video games. I've got all of, I've got like two or three video game systems. I like playing them. I've got an Atari 2600, super fun to play. It's in a box tucked in the back of a closet. And then I think to myself, you know, like the, it used to be a tradition for me and Anne, every New Year's Day, we would play Atari games all day. And this year it was like, do you want to do it? I don't want to take that box out. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Tension. Uh, that yeah exactly and so what gets sort of that that sort of prime space of of like i just move and and get near a thing and then i get to enjoy its its yeah. um, its setup its benefits its utility or whatever or um and so yeah and then that's that's a that's an ongoing puzzle and and for me it's it's just this matter of um i have i i I have the enough space now where I can really just mess it up and figure it out. And after doing that for a few years, it's getting better. Right. So like there's this, this ongoing investment in now the stuff near me is, is not quite, you, you know, to the level of, that I imagined in my head that your, your first house was set up as far as the, the super cool, you know, curated installations all over the place, but it's, it's on its way. And I can just thinking back, it's, I, I can really tell the difference because it's more convenient and it's more fun where, when I, you know, the stuff I can look around at now and, and get affected by. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it's working, mm. but I don't, but I'm still figuring it out. Right. So, yeah. Um, and uh, look, if I could jump in and maybe like point to the opposite direction of when we have little space, like, so like right now, um, Ann and I are struggling with the fact that uh, like, like so many people were homebound. Right. Um, so this, I did have a scenario where I had a, a space carved out with minimal stuff around me, but it was still a space where I could do that kind of curation. And I've had at least that since when Ann and I were first dating, like when we first lived together back in like 2000, um, we had a one bedroom apartment, you know, like 580 square feet, you know, not a lot of space, but there was this weird nook in the bedroom that went in like about four or five feet. And it was just the same width as my uh, drafting table. And so I was like, okay, drafting table. Whoop, and then like the three walls around that space were mine for curation for that same purpose of creating that sense of this is, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, put images, objects, and things that reinforce and reflect what I value and cherish about this endeavor that I'm on. Um, and as I'm sure we'll explore also, uh, artifacts of my journey through it in terms of things that I've gotten from other people or things that I've made. Like there's, it's not just like I'm putting tchotchkes up. It's also like, here's a piece of original art from somebody that I, I, I met in the industry, or this is something that I made that I'm really proud of that kind of thing. So. Yeah, that's a, that, it's an interesting combination of things. It's something that, I, uh, I, I grew into, I did not feel like this was a, um, something I would care about. Like when I was in my twenties, I, I started to care about it a little bit when I was in my thirties and then now I care a lot more about it. And, and it's because it, it has, uh, it does have a lot of positive effect where, where, um, I noticed that, uh, like some things nearby, it's like, it's nice to have a little bit of history. It's nice to have sort of like the, you know, some wedding photos, photos of my kids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the history of my, my, um, my art progression, uh, mm -hmm. my experience, um, history of a little, some things my kids made and stuff like that. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's something I, th that I don't know why I just didn't appreciate it as much. I just thought that, mm. oh, well, if I, um, if I just focus on the utility, that's where all the, that's where all the stuff comes from. Right. So just focus on the making. And I, I just, it took me a bit to sort of, but you, utility or something more utility sort of suggests a kind of truthfulness, right? There's like a purity in saying the word utility. What's its use? Well, you know, it's like, it's like, I think of that, that old Capra movie, Miracle on 34th Street. It's like, there's those, those weird intangibles that make life worth living. Right. And it's like, you can't point to what direct uh, benefit it has to society. And, and I am super busted on saying like, Oh, if society <laughs> ever falls apart, 
I'm the first one to go because I have no utility, right? Well, you know, there's 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 quality of life stuff that, and I don't mean quality of life in like some people would put put in a first world problems bucket, but quality of life is like it's not just about eating and procreating. <laughs> sure, <laughs> there's there's well, more to being a human. Yeah, maximizing your your productive output stuff. <laughs> where yeah 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 it it's um. And it's funny because even as I believe that, there would still be trinkets in my space, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I think of one of my first workspaces. I'm going to see if I can grab this picture without causing an avalanche. Whoop. Okay. Success. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, what's funny. So this is a photo of me and my first crew of my... Bring it over the, to, the bring game it over to company, your left. There you go. The game company that I started um, back in uh, 94. Wow. And... So if you notice on my workstation, boop, that's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> right? And there's yeah. little things here, you know. And it was funny, yeah. the classic no whining poster from the 90s. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my taste improved over the years, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, held on to Batman, let go of no whining posters. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but even though, like, I had that... That, that that approach and I thought all oh, just focusing on the functional and stuff for that that's what's most important like the the, the stuff would still enter my space so mm. I'm embracing it more way more now um, but um, but so uh, I guess I know this is more way more a second half of the show kind of thing but I am curious to ask you is that like in your orig- originally curated space is that like a big bang thing where it's like boom <laughs> No. All the materials exist and they form more complex materials and they expand into the space in like a weekend. No, this is definitely things that accrue over time, you know, and I've, I've got up on the screen, uh, I'm screen sharing like a, photos from my Google photos of our shared living space in the various mm-hmm. places, like in the basement, in Ann's office, in my office. I think this is, here's one of the, the pictures that, um, that you were referring to when you said you first came to my my uh, condo was this one where it was like okay there's an astronaut there's some transformers mm-hmm. there's there's bleeding gums murphy and then there was our row of three and three quarter inch action figures waving high and that was the rule <laughs> if they're on that shelf they have to be waving <laughs> high to everybody uh, there's so much i couldn't even figure out the patterns of what was happening but like <laughs> it's subtly communicating and that's awesome yeah, but like I mean, all these things were were gotten at different times. Like that Smoky Bear uh, on the shelf it was like Ann and I were at a thrift store in Kokomo, Indiana, while on the Cartoon Caravan with Zach Gialongo and Ben Hatke, and and um, and some of these things are gifts. Some of these things are things that we purchased together. Um, there's like an old menu for a German restaurant that I got Ann from an antique store when I was there by myself, and I just saw it and I was like, this is exactly the kind of thing that my wife would love to look at. Um, you know, reminding her of old 1970s German restaurants and also the kind of uh, silly, campy approach to restaurant menus that you would have back then. Mm. Um, the John Ganegi's watercolor paint box was a gift to Anne from her grandmother from like from her from like the 50s. You know, it's like a 50s or 60s. Mm. I forget what you, time that's from. So like these are things that like slowly accrue over time and then like so this this these three shelves in our uh, living room would change all the time. They were constantly morphing and evolving and things would come down and things would go up. You know, um that giant robot next to the astronaut is a character from the 2001 Transformer series Robots in Disguise named Ruination. He replaced Computron from the Gen 1 series who was there for a couple of years, you know, and then I was like, okay, it's time for Computron to go down. He's getting dusty time for somebody else to take his place for a little while so Mm. so not only is there a slow accruing but it's 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 constantly changing right i i am married to a woman who works in a museum (laughs) so the displays are constantly morphing right okay i mean that's so it's impressive right where (laughs) the um i'm happy to get one that is solid where i'm like wow this is using the space well and 
now I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, see, in, in that case, that was three, those were just three Ikea shelves, right? And it's just like, it was three spaces where it's like, these are narrow enough that we know what we can put on them. This is going to be a thing for like action figures and in pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And so that the space was defined and said, it was like, set it and forget it. But then what goes on it could come in and out of boxes all the time, right? I guess I do that a little bit with the spaces I'm in more, right? So okay. spaces where it's just kind of like, oh, that's a wall in in the in our living room. I'm not going to mess with that 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 iteratively. But mm. my my shelf next to me in my office space, yeah, I, I iterate in this room pretty quite a bit, right? But I spend a fair amount of time. And okay. um, you know, there's things like uh, I don't know, not. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, you know, well, for me, you know, interactive objects, games and whatnot, right? The Neo Geo Pocket Color, it, I have a lot of fond memories of the system, even though I'm, I had, haven't played like a giant library of the games. But like one of my favorite games is on here where um, it's, um, it's let's see, it's SNK versus Capcom Card, Fly, Card Fighters Clash, which is a little bit of a Pokemon type game, kind of. But the core gameplay is like um, is trading cards. So it's. I don't know. I've not, I was never someone who played a ton of magic or that kind of thing, but like uh, there's something about the the rules in this game. So I'm like, I like remembering the gameplay <laughs> and like the being reminded of those interesting choices and, and, and somehow it's, it's in the back of my head and anytime it, it enters my awareness mm -hmm. because it's nearby, I can be reminded of it because yeah. um, it's easy to forget too. Right. Where mm -hmm. I'm, I am being reminded about, um, you know, uh, yeah, just a lot of interesting things where I don't know, if, like the camera on the shelf. I mean, I know you can see a plant over there. Mm -hmm. and the uh, the Lego, um, the Lunar Lander, right? Mm. One project. Um, and uh, but but let's see some things like, um, gosh, some things have multiple stories to them where like there's good old uh, Tanuki Mario right nearby. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want I don't. I'm going to brag. I'm pretty good at Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. I've played against you. You are pretty dark. You're pretty good. I'm a demon, awful devil, <laughs> mean, terrible person in Mario Kart. And I'll laugh when all the whole time and I'll encourage you and share my knowledge along the way, but I'll probably beat you. But um, that's okay. Right. But you'll get stronger. Like we're all here. To work to get stronger. Anyway, that's, that's what yeah. that's the guy reminds me of. Um, but even though it's like Mario three, I, I, I solved Mario once. Right. Anyway. So what's funny is like little game things or whatever. And one thing that was like from, a, uh, from a trip to, um, visit you and Ann. I remember this. Yeah. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. We went, is that place called, right. We went to big fun, big fun. Oh, not big lots. What's a big lots. Anyway, fun. <laughs> it's yeah. more appropriately named. Yeah. Big, and big fun in Columbus, uh, Ohio is this like, almost non ADA compliant toy store where it's like a memorabilia toy store where it's like, yeah, you're not walking side. Well, you're certainly not practicing social distancing in there. You know, it's like, it's you, you're lucky if you can get through the aisles on your own, but it's floor to ceiling, literally to ceiling, uh, toys from our childhoods. I, yeah, I, I just stood jaw gape everywhere. Every <laughs> single, you can't look anywhere and in that store and not be just like your eyes are filled with so many possibilities and whatnot. But um, yeah. in a little, you know, little black box, I found this, this, um, this Psyduck and it didn't work. Right. It, it just, you know, cause it had a switch on it and I was like, eh, it's maybe a battery, whatever, you know, it turns out it's got, it's got a weird bat. I get it home eventually. And it's got a weird battery. If it replace that, it doesn't, uh, the voice doesn't work, but then I'm like, Hey, I get to test my electronics. So this thing has like a pile of stories in it. Right. Where yeah. I actually um, I did a whole post on this. Um, I did a little photo gallery and one of a Polytechnicast episode about this little little side duck because um, it was a fun electronics repair, which is just this th thing that like who knows over time how I'll prog progress with it. I don't think of that as like I'm a designer. I know I introduced myself a, t a trillion different ways in the show, but I design things. I I um, I. I uh, that includes, I mean, general, it includes a whole bucket of stuff or whatever, but, but, um, and making, uh, digital stuff, but like, that's where I focus for so long. I love the, you know, getting past that and, and, and trying a new space to feel that, that beginner's mind and all that. But, um, but it's neat to have a success in, in from that, that new 
study of electronic soldering and whatnot. So that's little side duck has a lot of stories in it anyway. Yeah. So I guess we'll talk about this, I think probably a little bit more in the second half of the show, but like this, this is something we talked about here and there in the past is like this idea of totemic magic, not literally, but like the concept of totem objects imbued with tons of meaning from a variety of sources that one can tap into. Like to, to this day, you know, um, the just just seeing some 1987 G.I. Joe action figures, just the image of them. I follow some different like toy accounts on Instagram and love just have pictures of like here's you know, Raptor from the 1997 G.I. Joe line. It'll it instantly transport me to the moment that I saw it in the store, and I was there in middle school with one of my best friends on our weekend excursions to Kmart to look for G.I. Joe figures, you know. Um, just the just, just seeing it can do that, right? Like, that's the kind of thing I think about when I think about like what things I put around, right? So like in my spaces, um, and I can pull back up my slideshow while I talk about it, um, I would have a combination of not just like toys from my childhood, but also like one of the things that um, I would often put in my spaces is like artwork by students. I have this this cherished piece of artwork from the first class I ever taught where a student drew a comic demonstrating the concepts that I taught in the class. And it was like Powerpuff Girl characters showing you how comics work. And it was like so immensely moving to have that experience of like, I just watch what happens when a teacher transmits understanding to somebody, you know? Uh, and she gave this as a gift to me, right? So mm. like that, wow. that is, and in, in the fact that it was like the, from the very first time I did, it was like from 2007, right? So it's this, this artifact that I put immediately to my right of my desk so that I could remind myself every time I sat down that this is what you do what you do, right? Like that moment was a huge, meaningful moment that you just going to hang on to for the rest of your life, right? So let's, let's keep, wow. keep that power source nearby. <laughs> but like another thing that I had in, in mm. it's in the pictures, actually, it's on the screen right now, um, is this drawing of Bumblebee that Anne did in 1986. So she was just a little mm. kid. And, and it's like, it's, you could tell that she set the toy down on the floor and like sat there on the floor drawing exactly what she saw, like doing the drawing what you see thing. But so it's like a toy represent, it, he didn't look like the cartoon, he looked like the toy, right? And I've often said like, if the house was ever on fire, that is the one thing I would go run again back to get again. I'd make sure the cats are safe, but then I would go after that drawing. Cause like, it is absolutely precious to me that it like, it's, it's so many of my interests, my wife, this, this character from this, this franchise that I adore all coming together in this very sincere, heartfelt image, right? She didn't think that when, when she was like, you know, whatever she was, like six years old, that anybody was going to care about this drawing, you know, 30 years later. But now it's like one of the most important things in the world to me, you know? Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's so it's like things that are a distillation of all those different stories and, and uh, meanings. That's, yeah, and, and let's see, so... That's where it's, 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 this is so much more than just this uh, acquiring of, of, um, I guess, extrinsic motivation stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know, there's deeper, there's, there's more, more meanings. I guess you can really just appreciate something or be arrested visually or something like that. But, but um, uh, what did you said? To, you wanted to keep that power source nearby and yeah. and like connecting with that the this well this, this the gesture of of um you know and making this this thing that's yeah um, and, and i wasn't there for that right it's just the image right. that is so arresting to me um sometimes it's that sometimes it's like just an arresting uh emotional package surrounding this little object or thing other times in the case of that powerpuff girls comic teaching me about how comics work um it's more like, you know that scene in Ratatouille when the bad guy eats the Ratatouille at the end? Do you remember this? I No, I, I never saw that show. Oh, I don't want to spoil it then. But like it's it's it, there's this wonderful moment where that kind of thing happens to somebody who is like very, very withered in heart. And then they're reconnected with this fundamental foundational experience from childhood and it changes them forever. It's like I go back to that well constantly. You know, it's it's a mm -hmm. habit for me to go back to that well. So like whenever I find there's a, a moment in my life where if something especially meaningful happens, it's like I want an artifact of that because I want to keep those toes. So like another thing that goes into my space is is um and people probably saw this when they were looking at the slideshow as it was playing is like there was art from you like there was there's was art that is gifted to me from friends that are become those moments too right so like this is this is an artifact of this 
this relationship that I have with this other person who has brought a lot of meaning and uh, pleasure into my into my experience. So yeah, of course that's going to go up too. There's so much of that that the, the yeah. So those connections and are they? Uh, There's so many different possible paths through this whole thing where we're just like looking at a thing and it's almost like um, uh, we could we could do a PBS show of 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 our homes. Right. And be like, oh, and this is the story of this object and what have you and all the meanings. And, and but like, that, gosh, when you when that that just really adds up where um, over time you set up these things. And um so I'm, I'm really curious, maybe we could go into the next part where like, what's our system for, for doing this setup and um, like, how are we trying to do this better over time? Mm. That kind of thing. Okay. What's our system for um, setting up and inspire and setting up, setting up inspiring things. That sounds good to me. Um, okay. So how about we come back in about a minute and a half and talk about that? Sounds great. We talked about what the things are and some of the reasons why, but now, like, are there any like systems that we think about in order to to approach that? So, we'll do that in about a minute and a half. We got to thank some people who make this show possible first, and those people are the folks who support us on Patreon. Whoops, I just turned the volume. Here we go. That's too loud. Turn it down a little bit more. All right, Patreon.com/slash Lead Into Art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. It's a way for you to say, hey, I believe in Rob and Jersey and what they do, and I want to help make this show more sustainable by supporting it on an ongoing basis. You can cancel at any time. You can do a one-time contribution to help make the show sustainable, and we are grateful for that. But we want to thank five people who have been doing it on a regular basis because it means a lot to us. First up, Gail Bushman. Thank you, Gail, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Gail at Nightingale Art on Instagram. And Catherine Sugru. Thank you, Catherine for your ongoing support. It means a lot to us. You can find Catherine on Twitter at Kat, K-A-T, Sue Gru, S-O-O-G-R-O-O. And Carrie Goble-Billick. Thank you, Carrie. Longtime supporter of the show. Interacts with us uh, quite a bit in the past. Uh, you can follow Carrie on all social media at Mushin Girl. Thank you, Carrie. And Brandon Dayton, longtime friend of the show. Thank you, Brandon, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Brandon Dayton. And finally, Jonathan Warnson. Thank you, Jonathan. And you can go hang out with all of them at Lean Into Art or Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art or Lean Into Art.com slash Patreon, uh, where you'll find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans, the places where you can go to get the show that we make only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk with other leaners in a safe space about whatever you want. Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. It really does. Thanks to your your brother for making that song too. It's a, such yeah. an excellent backdrop. Yeah, Elliot Drozd. Elliot, yeah, my brother Elliot wrote that, wrote and performed that song. He's done a, a bunch of the theme songs to my podcasts, and he, I mean, he and I are very close, and he really understands sort of my worldview, and he understands why I love the stuff from my childhood the way I love it because he grew up with me, experiencing it with me. Um, so it's like it's it's cool when I get to work with him on these things. I just get to give him like absolute total shorthand. I'm like, I want this to feel like this show and this show, and it should feel kind of like, I'm not really in your face, but I'm really joyously celebrating. So not overpowering, but joyously celebrating. Make it feel like that. And he's like, okay, here you go. But with the um, Fabulous Secrets one, I'm like, I want that one to feel like we're going to do something awesome right now. He's like, okay, here we go. <laughs> he gave that to me. <laughs> uh, he's great. Um, all right. But speaking of music, time to hit the second part of the show. We right. can't do a show without doing. <laughs> Music signifying we're in the second half of the show. All right, so systems. How do we systematize this? How are you thinking about this, Rob? Uh, I, I don't see. I don't. I I notice when other people are doing it well, and I think, how can I do this better? Where. Um, uh, well, for instance, I mentioned, you know, visiting your house, but also um, other artists, friends, houses. But then, uh, honestly, my wife, Kate Shield Stenzinger, in her office space, um, she does a really neat job curating different sort of smaller areas, right, in, in, in spaces. And I, th I think, wow, she like she can sit in, in this, this, this um, you know, particular, like she set up a little meditative space and it is so enriched full of like 
in, inspiring art and trinkets and um, like instant reminders for her where, where that resonates because I empathize, empathize with how powerful this is for her, right? Where I'm like, gosh, dude, have I set up somewhere that I could sit like that? And, you know, that kind of thing. So I start thinking through like, the, like how others have, have, well, I think of it as well, like you mentioned, like totemic magic or having mean, like meaningful, like talisman like symbols and uh, the, the stories that they do, they have individually, but then when there's a collection of them and, and like, it's almost, it can be amplifying. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what do you want to amplify? Uh, what do I want to amplify? Hmm. I suppose that that's an awesome question. Like, <laughs> what do I want to amplify? Um, I would like to set up the like more visual equivalents of other shorthands I have. Like, so um, certain games I, I play, I think I want the space version of that game, right? And also like um, certain um, like media. So for instance, like, what it feels like for me to play Devil's Crush, I would like I would like a maybe like a like a little nook that feels like Devil's Crush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um because if it's uh it's ex exciting and playful and um inviting. That that's uh, like that that's how I'd like to be affected when I you know and I I don't know if I have any any space that's quite that yet mm. not so concentrated right it's a sort of diffused where you know my, that my main tv room is like okay it's it's getting there right but mm -hmm. it's not quite you know whip a pinball at a, a spider skull level <laughs> while there's a like just a great riff in the background <laughs> so do you i mean like have you thought about how lighting affects that too? Cause like, I, I just wonder like if, if like, if you had an area that was like done up more in like arcade lighting, right. Would that change the way you engage with it? Yeah, I think so. I think that that's a really, that's a great idea. Um, gosh. Cause like when you deal with like three dimensional space or even like composition in a, in a, in a 2d work, whatever, um, the value in the high, you know, like the, the lighting of a scene. And it's such a huge thing. And why haven't I thought of that? So. Cause like, if you go to an arcade and if it was like, like banks of windows open, and a bunch of daylight streaming in, it would feel so different than when we were kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like that's, that's a space. Yeah. Could that I think be possible. What a funny challenge to like, could you have yeah. a bright arcade? Right. And, but, but, or be able to switch modes or do the, you know? Yeah. But I, I I think about that because like one of the things I'm thinking about too when we're house hunting is like I would love to have my three little silly game systems just out and I didn't have to pull them out of boxes. Not that I do a ton of gaming, but I bet I would do it more if I actually had access to them. Uh, and then I think about like, well, I don't want to just have them in like some kind of like basement man cave with a like gray carpeting just sitting in the middle of the floor. Like what would it look like, right? Um, by the way, really, mm -hmm. really not comfortable with the term man cave. I really like when I see the listings and when they say that, I'm like, ah, you know, all kinds of people could use that space. A lot of people like caves, you know, <laughs> I don't understand why it has to be like something a dude has to like be pushed down into, but have thing. you seen the term she shack, which is an attempt to make an inclusive, uh, so, because this is where you take the copywriter and, and they, they go from, you know, they're trying to be inclusive and they go, it's for your man cave or your she shack. And it's still not quite inclusive. <laughs> yeah, because it's then you're saying it's one or the other. Why can't exactly. why can't it be? Maybe, maybe, just maybe, my wife and I have similar interests. <laughs> you know, yeah. like personal space is important. Having your own pursuits is important. But maybe we could have a space where we both do stuff. That'd be cool, right? Uh, or we could switch out. Doesn't matter. You know. Anyway, I don't want. I, I don't. I don't want to get like finger waggy at the internet again. But. Um, because that is it's also a funny another thing. I yeah. wrestle with that as well, right? Yeah, I've I've I accident I've I've wandered through the the I the it, at a uh, let's see what's that place? It's there's a a local um, uh, hardware and various. It's kind of like a Home Depot competitor called Menards. Oh yeah, yeah. Save you. big okay. money at Menards. <laughs> yeah, help. But yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, 
fine. So for some context for that, <laughs> yeah. Um, when I when I was uh, uh, in my let's see, in my late teens and early twenties, I was a <clears throat> I was a janitor overnights, and that was one of the that was one of the retail establishments that I cleaned. Oh, and then sometimes they would leave the room locked that would have the PA system and it actually would repeat that on loop all night long. Oh my gosh. All night long. Oh my gosh. Save big, big money, money, help. (laughs) We need to do, we need to do it. We need to do an extra lean on this. So, (laughs) okay. Fair enough. Uh, But, but anyway, yeah, so you go through like the, the Menards places and, and you see. They have a whole aisle of man cave uh, elements. Uh, yep, implements. It's called the, I think it's called the man cave aisle. So, oh, well, I guess. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny, it's a cultural thing. It's of this moment. That's not yeah. going to probably, who knows what new name such a thing will be called in the future. But. Anyway, I well, I, I the concept for the, is out for, there. for the we record a lot. for the record future. I I vote with we, we bring back Rumpus Room. Let's Ooh. that. <laughs> why can't we? <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> All right. So, um, but anyway, yeah, I think about like the space also, like the the um, the kind of lighting you're going to get in there. Um, I, I imagine you're effects, right. Like, yeah. And in fact, I think it's, I think I, I think the challenge will be, it's like, um, some kind of, uh, it's relaxing by day arcade by night. You know what I mean? Like that's the, that's the functional puzzle for that room. I think for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But I like that lighting is a good, is a good angle to try to improve. But I mean, going back to this idea of like forming a system, it, so you got to establish some success criteria. That's something we talk about a lot in the show. So what are the success criteria? What are you trying to amplify? Right. And so like, what am I going to do in these spaces? And there's some spaces where um, the utility overmatches the inspiration. So like in my uh, basement at my last place, we had a screen printing uh, set up. You saw this and it was very utilitarian. It was just like it was like. Um, just workbenches with like the inks and the screen printing materials up. Why, why are you smiling? Cause that's inspiring to me. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's the funny thing is, is that I guess I want to somehow achieve a like theme park, like visualization of the playfulness and in, in a uh, inviting way of, of, Gaming as as an inclusive thing that that we all do. We all want to, you know, um, explore and 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 spaces that have these sort of limited choices and their puzzles that are very engaging. Their positive mm. reinforcement, all that. Games are awesome for that, and that's where I, I want to celebrate that with certain symbols and, and whatnot. But like um, the uh, but the utility as well. You know, like I like that. Like to to go from a space like that to like a room with steel tables. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> blow my mind like oh my gosh yes yeah. so i'm curious if you've ever watched any of the videos about the life of charles and ray eames the famous furniture designers yeah like you've seen their uh, studio it's been a while yeah um mm-hmm. yeah they, they I, there's some film that exists of their studios and like that that to, to me and Anne was always like like a very like inspiring place to look because they had like designated spaces where this is a space for collecting and and curating and uh, dwelling upon, and here's spaces to do. And I think that that's, that's sort of like the system that we've approached in the past. It's like, okay, there are spaces to do. Now, when I, again, I'll pull up my slideshow, when you look at my space to do my art, um, the space to do didn't require a whole lot of, um, as long as I had a flat surface in front of me, I had the space to do. So then the surrounding walls can become this sort of curation of things to like provide me with that fuel. Right. Whereas the space to do screen printing, the space to do letterpress work, that that required more um, horizontal and vertical wall space. Like I'm moving screens up and down. Right. Um, if, if I have a whole bunch of G.I. Joe action figures on the wall behind where the screen goes up, I'm going to knock stuff down all the time. So like the, the space feels different as a result of that. So um, 
But at the same time, yeah, now that I think about it, we did have like uh, pegboards and uh, what is it, cork boards with all sorts of, whenever we printed something we especially loved, we put it up there as like an artifact to say like, look at this, look at the um, trail of competence we're leaving as people who are exploring this technology of printing with screen, uh, screen printing and letterpress. So and we the did space do that tells too. a story, right? So yeah. like each each kind of space tells a different kind of story, and so even the useful space is having this. Um, these things happened here, right? These were made here. That that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, yeah, and then just add yeah, to be able to to accomplish aspects of the physical media creative process and have the right elements to do to to have a good process right to where you could have like some wet ink or paint and then have a drying rack available mm -hmm. and stuff like that ah mm -hmm. oh, that's a certain kind of beauty to me um I, it, it actually now that i think about it that has been the discussion that ann and i have been having with our real estate agent as we look at different houses like okay you know there's like certain things that you put on your wish list like oh i'd love it to have lots of natural light and i'd love it to have a sunroom and i'd love it to have this kind of a kitchen with these kind of appliances and so on but like the probably the top most on my personal list was i need a space where i can get ink on the floor and i don't feel worried about it right that's the kind of mm -hmm. space i want to work I, I need a space mm -hmm. where I can have all sorts of toxic chemicals. Well, not toxic chemicals, but chem non-child safe chemicals. Let's put it that way. Like, like, like the uh, letterpress ink, like you're using to clean a letterpress, you're using some like fairly not super safe to drink stuff. Um, I need a space where that can all exist apart from where we live. Right. So that can look like a lot of things. That could be a garage. That could be, you know, or like an insulated and heated garage. It could be like an, an outbuilding. It could be a basement. It could be a different, completely different room with a house that's separated in some way. But like we, yes, we have spaces where we want to celebrate, you know, like have fun and spaces where it is to, to do, to make things. Um, both have different kinds of arrangements of, um, elements on the walls to help us uh, to inspire us in those spaces right so then 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 the system it's like there's each room has a job it's 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 i guess choosing like an emphasis of of that room like it has mm -hmm. a job and how can you succeed in doing that like what what do you like what outcomes do you want to experience related to that job and then what sort of um elements in the environment help um help you accomplish that um mm -hmm that's hmm and and but that's not to say that we've always had that you know we work with what we've got because like i just want to make sure that i'm not that we're not speaking to like only people in a certain situation because like when when ann and i had our um we had a two-bedroom apartment and i want to say 2007 when we first started doing screen printing and it was a carpeted apartment we didn't own it we had a security deposit we wanted to get back so when we decided to start doing screen printing with like using like um Oh, what is it called? Photo cell sensitive emulsion, burning screens, pulling the screens and printing and then washing the screens off. We're like, okay, how are we going to do this in this space? Right. So like, okay, uh, the bathroom, one bathroom in the apartment, by the way, like it's going to be the screen printing studio. And, you know, just make sure that everybody's just like on a road trip. Did everybody go? Because <laughs> we're about to do some printing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then, uh, so it, then we actually pulled the screens on our dining room table. So like, you know, it's like you work with what you've got too, but, um, but yeah, I, yeah, that's, um, I, I remember working with Kate to set up, uh, this is when she was doing pottery more. And, um, so we set up a, um, a, an electric wheel in our, um, in the coat closet that we were, you know, it's like the guests come and we would you know, have a, we would quickly take their coats if they wanted to, you know, set them somewhere. And then we'd figure out, you know, we've tried coat, like a coat rack and those don't hold that many coats, whatever. But like we, Kate's studio took priority in that, that closet. It was, it was big enough and uh, just ran an extension cord, um, put, uh, put a layer of tarp and that sort of, uh, walking like walkway plastic right oh so, yeah yeah like my yeah. grandma had in the 19 early 1980s <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> thank you jersey's grandma because uh that <laughs> that made there no damage whatsoever that place yeah. rolled up rolled up the stuff boom totally yeah clean. so um but yeah so i, I don't know if there's any place else to go with that do, do we want to talk about like about this just being stuff too because like mm -hmm. uh yes. I, I, yeah, 
because the other thing is, I walk a line on this myself because like I'm a big believer in that totemic, like the 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 magic magic in this in the sense of poetry magic, like, like psychological magic, right? It has it has psychic psychological energy that I lend to it through my own experience and memory. Does that sound fair? Did I describe it a little bit more mm-hmm. concretely? Less less uh oh what's what's the word for it? Less less uh, frou frou. Um mm-hmm. okay. Um but at the same time, uh it's just stuff I've, I have many experiences as a young person with 40 or 50 siblings where the younger siblings are just going to take your stuff and it's going to get broke. You know, I, and I, the the story I told on the 4 million years later podcast is I came up the stairs to my bedroom. I turned the corner. My little brother had a chair and he was moving it like a, like a seesaw and using the leg to smash my Dinobot sludge action figure or transformer, you know? And it was, it was like the wing parts on the back that like, you can't fix that. It's once it's busted off, it's busted off. He can't turn into a, a Diplodocus anymore or a Brontosaurus, whatever he was, you know? And I and like the first couple times that kind of thing happens, you're like, oh my gosh. But then like the fourth or fifth time I was like, well, I'm growing accustomed to a world where things are not permanent. <laughs> they come in and out of my life. Wow. You know? that's a, uh, yeah. It's a way to get introduced to some, some uh, incredible, Buddhist. yeah, yeah, Buddhist philosophy. Uh, I, I remember when I first encountered Buddhism, I was like, this feels right. Uh, but anyway, so like there's, there's, I walk this line between like, yeah, it's very meaningful. And yes, I'd run into the house if it was on fire to get that bubble bee drawing. Um, but, you know, it also is just stuff. Can we talk about that? Because let's not get ourselves mm-hmm. too wound up in this idea of. It's uh, I so I wrestle with this right where I I somehow feel very strongly, strongly that it, it is just stuff and that just, you know, focusing on, on experiences is what matters. And the let's see but i can tell you being in a place where there's less magic where there versus where there's more magic more magic's more magic i don't want to say like and and so i notice the difference as being someone who's dismissed things of things as just stuff and like um maybe it's like well i'm moving i'm gonna throw all this crap in a box maybe i'll throw maybe i'll get rid of it maybe i won't but or, or i might hold on to it just in storage and make the decision later if I keep it, but uh, I'm not that attached to it. But then again, noticing when there's the, the meaning is what's most important, right? And, and the experiences. And, and that's where, um, you know, I've go to different folks, different houses and, and, you know, people who are designers, people who are developing, like, I guess I have different, different categories, like people who identify mostly as like a uh, creator of software, create, you know, a, a designer or a musician or um, a visual artist. Right. And they all kind of, you know, have different style tendencies and each, all these different things, which I consider, I, I identify it as all the above. You can accumulate the stuff and get very attached to the stuff. Um, but like what I super admire, it's not the stuff. It's the, um, it's, it's the care and the ability to, to, to relate to that care. And that's when I'm like, ah, someone did something in this space, no matter how big or small that affects them and affects me. And I'm like, this is a great way to use whatever amount of space. And I want to learn how to continue to do that better. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching Ann and I being house hunting. We've been watching lots of those like home video TV shows where it's like, two people hunting for a house and trying to determine spaces and then like also like ones where it's like oh we take a space that's really not conducive to living in and we make it livable somehow right because like eh, might be good food for thought and there was this one where it was this guy basically turned this like long apartment into an apple store it was just all white and all like like light wood finishes and there was nothing out on the surfaces and it was it was like arresting to me it was like like oh oh i i, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to live in a retail space. That's weird. But like he was, he was totally like, like a web designer kind of guy. He looked the part and everything. Um, and I was like, but and that's all to say, like I recognize that when people were seeing that slideshow playing, 
they might have been having a similar kind of like stand back with their <laughs> arms forward. No, no, <laughs> I don't want to live in the weird uh, 80s cartoon hoarder house. Um, but uh, the the care, I think, I think is what you're pointing at is like these things are, are placed there because like th- these are all artifacts of meaning. And like, yes, if our if one of our action figures breaks, it's like, well, we had this experience where this thing meant something and it was part of our lives for a while. Um, I think Anne and I, and I think another thing I was reminded of while you were describing that was um, when I think about that row of action figures that were all waving high, I'll pull it up again. Cause I think it's, this is uh, come on, go back to photos. I want to find that one of the action figures saying, hi, where'd you go? There you are. Okay. So now I can pull it up on screen. Um, if you look, up at, let me pull it a little closer. Yeah, so we got like Robotech figures, Voltron figures, Star Wars figures, GI Joe figures, all waving hello. And it's like, well, what's the meaning in that, right? What's what's the the story that Anne and I have behind that? The story there is Anne and I literally saying like, hey, look at most of these figures have a hand that's sort of open. Let's just have them waving high, and it'll be a playful thing that we do. Um, and this is one of those things where like. I said these words recently to Anne is that I don't know who I would be had I never married her, right? Like I can't play that hypothetical game. I can't say, I don't have this, this like alternate universe story of how, um, you know, like Jimmy Stewart in it's a wonderful life, two Capra references in one Lena Tarrant. That's amazing. You know, like it's a wonderful life where he finds out what happened if he was never born. Um, I don't have that story in my head. And, and the part of the reason why is because that kind of interaction with the the things that we put around our place, like that kind of playfulness of like, hey, let's put a, a plate of meats in Chewbacca's hands. Hey, let's have all of our action figures waving high. There is no meaning. There's no story behind that beyond the playful nature of our relationship and the way we engage with the things that we love. And I think that that... If I could, I could draw a line between those kinds of moments of playfulness to the kind of work that I like to do. If, does that make sense? It makes total sense, yes. The- so so part of it is is that this is not set it and forget it for us because it is a thing we actively engage with back and forth and play with all the time. Mm. That's, well, and yeah, okay, that's part of the meaning. Part of the meaning is active play and remembering to play. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's- yeah, that, that, that playfulness is present in our lives a lot of the time. Um which I, I, I fully acknowledge that that could, you know, that could be read as weird. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's just the two of us. We had nobody to answer to on this, so we get to do this. <laughs> yeah, and and um, the, the idea that, let's see, the, a thing happened, a thing you, you, you chose to juxtapose these different things that each one individually came into your life in a certain way. And um, let's see. Uh, I always feel weird mentioning people's names. So some like someone's in the chat. I always feel weird when I know people, someone's real world name versus their handle. Right. So I never know what to say, but um, <clears throat> there's uh, um, this, this thought that uh, Lithmus in the, in the chat. Oh yeah. Joseph. Fine. I'll say Joseph Coco. Fine. Um, so he, as he clarifies in the chat. And um, I just wanted you to know that I know it's you, but so he, he mentions that we have a link plushie locked in a bird cage in Becca's studio. No real story there, but even saying that out loud, I'm laughing. Right. Yeah. So there's the, there is a kind of story. It doesn't have to be a, like some kind of epic, epic tale of multiple chapters or like, even like yeah. a side duck of like, you know, we will rebuild him. You know, like Psyduck came into my world and I'm like, I'm not qualified to fix you, but I'm going to find a way. Yeah. And um, what, what have you, um, that this, there is a story. Uh, it, there's, it doesn't have to be that. It can be just the, the emergent one of, of the, of this is my own behavior. And I'm reminded of something that I care to do. And it can really accumulate like the, the, uh, the sheer amount of playfulness in your space, Jersey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's affecting. 
Yeah, it, it, what's what's also I think interesting and worth underlining here is that it is, it is not intended to be affecting to anybody beyond us, right? We didn't do it for the performance of it. Um, mm. And as a matter of fact, it's one of those things where when you came to my place and then you were engaging with it the way you were, I was like, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> it's like it's like it's being reminded that you're breathing. Like when suddenly somebody says, "Oh, you're breathing right now." I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'm aren't I?" Right? But like, I wasn't thinking about wow. that before. It was, this, it was this, this thing that we just do. So, I think that's an important aspect of it too. Is like really remembering that this is really for you. Uh, if you can do it unselfconsciously, that's 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 something I try to look for because um, this is our space, you know. Um, but uh, but it, Joseph was asking in the chat too. Is like, are, am I going to do a blueprint of the house to figure out where everything's going to go? Not for that kind of organism. The, the system that I use is determined based on the use of the room first. So first, we're going to figure out where like where's my desk going to go. Once I got the, that figured out, the desk goes there because of whatever reasons. You know, like we're we've been looking at some houses and like as we look at them, like okay, this is where if if we bought this place, this is where the letterpress would go, right? This is where the screen printing setup would go. And once we establish that, then we look at the walls, look at the space. And as a matter of fact, one of the places we looked at, they did that open concept thing where they like took an old house and they just like took out all the walls and like look, it's open concept now. Which and they go great for entertaining. I'm like, I guess that's nice. And I'm like, where's my stuff gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. we literally had that conversation like yeah but we can't put our stuff anywhere you know it's like it's gonna be all in like unless we get like those glass cases that people use to put their like pristine toy collections but um and that's another thing that i, I like i think this is very idiosyncratic to the person because i you know my buddy my co-host of the transformers podcast hoover is like jersey you're crossing the fandoms when you put your he-man figures next to your gi joe figures i'm like yeah well <laughs> He's like, no, you put your GI Joes here. You put your Transformers here. You organize them by Autobot and Decepticon. <laughs> Don't let the peas touch the carrots. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It, it, so you, yeah, that is that is a thing where um, the juxtaposition of all the stuff where I just thought, I always, this could be a wrong inference because it's not my space and I didn't curate it. But like, I always thought it was the the things are, it's like if you could sort a folder by feeling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have um, a picture here I'll pull up and it was what I called in my old office, my good guy shelf. Right. You saw this. Um, uh -huh. And let me get it on screen uh, right there. So like this was just like a single shelf next to where I did a lot of my digital work and podcasting. And it was like, OK, these are all like noble characters that I get a lot of like positive, positive charge from. Right. You got like Strawberry Shortcake, He-Man, Supergirl, Samus Aran, uh, Ned Flanders, Optimus Primal, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a heck of a, um, yeah, that's like a wall of force ghosts. Oh, <laughs> that's basically it, yes. Make the comics, Jersey. <laughs> Don't don't uh, don't dwell too much on those negative feelings where you're feeling like resentment or anger or frustration or self pity or self loathing, right? Those things happen, but don't hang on to them too long. Mm. You know that kind of thing. That's pretty great. Like it, that. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. There's a lot in this in this episode of like the criteria and the feelings. Like what what do you want to feel? What's a room? what's the room's job and all that kind of stuff. And um, I don't know, I think it's a deep topic. I mean, there's, there's um, it's, it's like, this is our own version of a, um, a visual artist leaning toward putting play, playful stuff in their room version of like how's magazine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And I, until you brought up doing this as a topic, I never thought about it all that much out loud. Um, it's just been a thing that like Ann and I have done in a, and I, I think you're right to make that definition of like the feelings. Um, cause there are spaces where it's like, this is mine and Ann's space to be playful with things. And then there's that she's got her spaces that I don't really engage with. And I've got my spaces that she doesn't engage with. And it's not that it's off limits. It's just more like, it's just, it's, it's personal boundary kind of thing. It's like, well, that's his space to do what he will with. And then, um, we engage with it in our own ways, but then there's like multi-use spaces where we both, we both put our stuff there and we both, uh, it, it, I think the spaces where we both engage with those spaces move and are more fluid as a result. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if that's the case for me as well. I think that's true. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, we have something too, like in our, um, our main living space is uh, on shelves, we have uh, various Legos that we've all put together, different Lego mm-hmm. sets. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's funny that that really does live and breathe uh, because we'll, we'll, we'll take a bunch of stuff down and all of a sudden it'll be all on the spread on the tables and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it'll go back and it'll get rearranged, but it's sort of this, um, it's, it's a collaboration, I guess. Some spaces are yeah, just, just full of more collaboration. Hmm. Hmm. Well, do you think we, we did a, a, a decent enough uh, walk around this one? I think so. That was fun. Um, okay, good. Yeah. This might be a, a, this might be a good one I, that I'll re-listen to and think about uh, like strategies for uh, just continuing to iterate. Uh, if and when Ann and I find a house here in Columbus and move into it, I think that will be a time to reinvestigate this topic because I will be like very much on the ground thinking hard about that as we set up the spaces. Um, hmm. So, yeah. That sounds good. All right, cool. So then so. is it time for us to head over to, well, take a break. We'll take one more break mm-hmm. and then we will uh, do our two minute practice this week. Sounds wonderful. Okay. So in about a minute and a half, two minutes, we're going to talk about uh what we're what we did with last week's two minute practice, what we're planning on doing next week with our two minute practice, leanatork.com slash number two minute practice. Um, but before we do that, we got to thank some other people who make the show possible. Most people happen to be us. We make the show possible. We make lots of things, and then we bring the thoughts that we encounter as we make things into this project called Lean and Tart. The thing that I make that I hope you will check out today is a new comic that just started updating. I'm so excited about this. Um, it's Nightmare Pro Wrestling at nightmareprowrestling.com. Um, and it is just how you would imagine it sounds. It's werewolves, mummies, monsters, and Draculas in a pro wrestling federation. And uh, it's by a guy named John David Guerra. Uh, and he's got a new series that just started updating today called In the Belly of the Beast. And it's sort of like a WrestleMania like title match series of matches. But he hired different artists to draw each different match and he matched the artist to the kind of match that he that he thought would they would work best at um <laughs> and and the reason i'm bringing it up is that i drew the match that's updating right now which is grave and lobo the tag team versus the pumpkin boys um and he specifically said that like well because it's a tag team match there's gonna be lots and lots of physical action and there's a lot of opportunities for comedy here because of grave and lobo's relationship so he asked me to draw this one. And uh, you, you can, the first, I think, five pages are updated right now at nightmareprowrestling.com. Um, I have a lot of affection for this comic regardless. So when he asked me to, to participate in it, I was like, are you kidding me? Of course I will. Um, but uh, I, if, if, if I pointed you at anything that I had a lot of fun with on this, it would be like the crowd scenes, drawing all these monsters with all of their various signs supporting the the, the, the team members that they like. <laughs> It's beautiful. Like, like I, I checked out these pages today. Holy moly! It's, uh, it, it's awesome. The writing's exciting. The visuals are amazing. So incredible uh, work, thank Jersey. you, Santa. Oh um, my gosh! And, uh, and I gotta say, like, little icing on the cake. The viewing experience is fantastic. I'm a comic UI snob, and oh my god, <laughs> they've, uh, yeah, this is a really well, um, really well presented reading experience for a web comic. Yeah, John thought really hard about it. Uh, oh, and the Pumpkin Boys are the heels of this match, and they're like a four-person team. And like the the lead dude, uh, Ivan Hollow, when I was reading about it, reading in the script, I can't remember if John told me to or if I inferred it. I, I'd have to go back. It's been a while since I've drawn these pages, but it was like, oh, Ivan Hollow is totally Paul Bearer from the old Undertaker uh, character from WWF, WWE. And so I was like trying to evoke him as best as I could as he's like giving his little pre-match poem. Uh, gosh, these guys were fun to draw. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's great. Just that the the banter and all that. It's 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 is awesome. I cannot wait. I mean, the only it's like now it, it updates weekly, right? It's updating weekly uh, for a big chunk of the year. I think into next year. Um, so yeah, the my story will be updating now through May sixth. It looks like. Um, so the story I drew, I should say, because John wrote it and colored it. I just penciled and inked it. Uh, NightmareProWrestling.com. I hope you will go check it out and uh, 
It, it, there's a lot of other great stories. I've seen the other pages from the book. It's it's an incredible. It's going to be an incredible book when he collects it all. Um, so Rob, you do all sorts of coaching and training and teaching. I do, and I offer it all at robstenzinger.com/store.html. And you'll see the creative process coaching that I do and the uh, workshops that I offer. They're all online. Each of them are available at both Skillshare and my Gumroad store. Easy links to get to all that stuff at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. Two things to highlight. Um, let's see. Let's say that you want to do a little, little gauntlet of some career coaching, some leveling up and encouragement and whatnot. Uh, you could do um, the choosing your career path coaching facilitation package. So that's, that's a, that's a good wing, Good thing to um, check out. Send me an email about it. One of my workshops that um, is super helpful for collaboration is uh, drawing user journey maps. And uh, this is going to help you with sort of mapping useful ideas across different perspectives or think about different hats that you can wear as like, well, think about the, the, the user, the person you're serving with your, your product or, 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 you know, any kind of business that you have, what is, what's their life like before they encounter it, your thing, then, then after, and then during, or, or this whole string of events in there. And then across um, well, wearing your, your business hat and your engineering hat, your design hat, all that stuff, uh, bring it all together into this story that gets, it helps you get out of your own head, but also it helps you with your, when you're working with a team of collaborators of varying different perspectives and everyone gets to see their voice in, in affecting the user journey. It's, um, it's a pretty useful decision tool to, to yeah. help, um, bring everyone together and decide what's ne- what's important to work on next to do something mm-hmm. great for your audience. And, and that's can, Ro- robstenzinger.com yep. slash store.html. And this will, so you'll, you'll see the listings and they'll take you to Skillshare or Gumroad. Your choice. You choose. Uh, and then the last thing that we hope you'll check out today is the Lean Into Art Discord. Yes, we have a server now. A server? A forum. That's what I meant to say. It's a Discord server, otherwise known as a forum. And there are three public channels uh, through which you can interact with other leaners and us. And there's also three private channels only for folks who support us on Patreon. The invite link will be in the show notes for this and every episode of Lean Into Art. So thanks to everybody who has been interacting with us in the Discord. It's been fun talking with you. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a fun place. Low pressure way to socialize with uh, fellow leaners. And it's a place where we can post our two minute challenges. So now is the part when I say, hi, Rob. Hey, Jersey. Two minute practices. A two minute practice. Yeah. Time for another two minute practice. So uh, what did we do last week? Well, you had a really interesting idea of uh, doing a practice of Take, snapping photos of things that were sort of uh, arresting of your attention. And you, you said, if it made you go, ah, right. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, you, I was sold. I thought that sounds like a good thing to practice. Let's, let, let's see what happens. Um, so how did that go for you? Uh, it's funny. I should have seen this the moment I said it, but this idea of set a timer and then look for things that make you go, ah, right. Things that make you feel inspired or things that ca- capture you. I was trying to keep it vague specifically to say like, it could also be things that make you go, oh, right. It's anything that, <laughs> anything that just makes you stop. Right. Um, and so it's like set a timer and be mindful. Well, I guess that's what you do when you meditate. So I guess it wasn't that big of a, th- that tall of an order, but th- the first time I tried it, I was like, okay, be mindful, be mindful, be mindful, be mindful. (laughs) (laughs) Fill that bucket of mindful, two minutes of it, ever scooping in mindful. Which is, which is such a rookie move, right? It is like totally like, Oh, I'm meditating. I'm meditating. Right. That's not how it works. And you know that. Um, so, but I mean, so what it, it quickly evolved into me just like doing it when I was just, it just became like this sort of this thing that sort of, popped in and out of my experience for the last week, if that makes sense. I've just noticed that I was being more attentive to it in a general sense. I only did it with a timer a couple times um, and grabbed a handful of photos. 
Um, but then like, because I, that I knew that was part of the practice this week, it was like, well, this could be part of my two minute practice. But then I felt like, oh, that's cheating because now I've got like four photos from different hours of the day. It wasn't in the two minute practice. Well, maybe just maybe the takeaway is, is that in the, the first couple two minute practices I did created an ongoing practice in some way in my life. I don't know. Or is that rationalizing Rob? <laughs> <laughs> maybe what we learned is that we're we're here making sense of a story and that's what happened the end um no it's, i felt that as well like like and i was so i it's funny because i felt the same exact thing like encountering this the the this uh this challenge is all right two minutes uh, all right, mm, hit my timer now. Quickly look around. <laughs> yeah. And what what catches my attention? And after one one time trying that, I'm like, well, I'm totally gonna hack the challenge and and do this in a different way because I like the idea of like a photo journal of stuff that caught my attention, and that's where I, I allowed that to go. Where mm. I, I thought, let's see if I do this. Things get my attention, quick pull out my camera. It's not that hard, smartphone and what have you, and and snap a photo. Maybe it's precious, maybe it's it's rough, but I it's it's a journal thing. So just keep it up. And I I did capture about 40 photos <clears throat> over the course of the week, or week and a half-ish. Okay. And uh yeah. And so it's uh, you know, it worked. Uh, but I, but I had that different thing where sometimes practicing isn't like a two minute timed gauntlet. I think another thing I felt, I fell prey to, and it's funny because this was actually based on an assignment that I used to issue in my classes, my comics classes. I would send the kids home and I would say, go walk around your house and just take pictures of things that you think are interesting. And I didn't put a timer on it. I just said, take pictures of things that you think are, look at something in a way that makes you say that's interesting. And then we would have them actually put their photos out on the table and we would look for what are the common themes of their storytelling eye. Ah, all of your shots are about depth. Look at this, this one, this one, this one's all about you looking at something from far away with something framing the shot. Let's think about that in your comic storytelling. That was like the, the whole point of that exercise. But the point of it was also to give them as easy a way as possible to learn that about themselves, right? Rather than having them try go through all the struggle of trying to draw something, let's just take pictures so we can just see where your tastes lie, that kind of thing. And so, but I think if I were to do it again, I would, encourage myself of quality over quantity set the two minute timer if you get one photo it's no big deal right i think there was this this pressure that i had to have like five to seven photos to show for my two minutes um i think that's what was making it feel so i would i would not i would not characterize it as anxiety but it it felt more intense than i wanted it to feel when it should feel relaxed i've i've felt that almost every single challenge though I, I've, um, the only ones that I have felt more relaxed are like the breathing one. And that's probably it. <laughs> I so enjoyed, I, I wonder if we could learn different kinds of intensity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wonder if that's what we can learn from this is I wonder if there's a way, if whatever challenge we do next, if we should bring a sense of don't worry about, because the whole idea is like, this is, this is to be, uh, inexpensive in terms of time, in terms of effort, in terms of energy, it's just to create practice and practice as we've explored in this and in the Lena Tart cast proper is um, is about checking in and doing a thing for the sake of doing it, not for having some kind of intended result. So is there a way we can, we can extract from that a sort of like implicit mandate of <laughs> doing it in a relaxed and focused way, a purposeful pause with practice rather than trying to have something to report back with. Because the experience is what we report back with. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What 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 feels like that? I guess. Yeah. There's uh, like so much about creative process is, is like, you think about um, solving the problem of expressing something visually. There is the accretion effect of a sketch where things build, things build, things build. So you could see how much you could build on something small in two minutes, mm -hmm. but with the idea that 
it's not about the much. It's about the quality of experience, not the quality of the product. Uh, what would what activity exemplifies that? Oh, you just named it. Do a drawing two minutes a day for a week. One single drawing. You're building on one drawing. You you do a drawing two minutes at a time. <laughs> I didn't realize I said something. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I just was, that was, I, I was, I was, exp that was a thoughtful exploration. So I like what you said. Pick a thing to draw. And so it's one piece of paper, whatever size piece of paper doesn't matter, but you are going to add to that drawing two minutes at a time over the course of the week. And whatever you got at the end is what you got at the end. That sounds fantastic. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for that, Trizzy. <laughs> well, thank you. You're the one who came up with it. <laughs> I just listened and responded. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, did we do it? Mm -hmm. You did. That we was did a, a, we did a podcast. We did a two minute practice. We did a podcast. We did a podcast and a podcast. Because <laughs> two minute practice podcast is actually collected at leanintoart.com slash two minute practice. Number two minute practice. Yep. So you can also uh, find us on the podcatchers now, right? The the two minute practice podcast. Yeah, no, not yet. Oh, rats! I haven't I haven't spread that. We need that's a follow up for both of us. Oh, okay. Okay. Think, um, yes. But in the meantime, you can find it at leanintoart dot com slash number two minute pod, uh, practice, and we post them in the feeds as well in the social media feeds. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well. Thank you, Rob, for this discussion and for organizing uh, some thoughts around this whole topic. Uh, thanks, oh, everybody. My pleasure. Thank you, Jersey. Thanks, everybody, who uh, turned out for the live stream. Uh, this is the part where I say we record the show weekly, usually on Thursdays at noon Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central. Stream it live on twitch.tv slash Lena to Art and then collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash Lena to Art and Lena to Art.com. And until next time. I have been Jersey Drozd of LenaTwart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of LenaTwart.com and I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at LenaTwart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user LenaTwart and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.